Welcome back to Animal Crossing New Horizons. I'm Dear Darling. I shall we see what's going on on our lovely island of Fawn Hollow today, where you can probably tell from the title, we're going to be talking about Here Comes Nico today. So if you're new to my daily vlog series or whatever, this is not me recreating Here Comes Nico or anything like that. This is me in my daily vlog, having just finished Here Comes Nico and going to talk about it and going to talk about it. And thus, I'm going to talk about it um, a little bit. Um, so yeah, I, I suppose, you know, I'll, I'll warn you before I get to any spoilers about Here Comes Nico. I wouldn't really worry too much about spoilers um, for Here Comes Nico because I don't think it's that conducive to the experience, but that's up to you, of course. But anyway, hello everyone. Right now in Fawn Hollow, 6.07pm on Monday, April 17th, 2023. So, Here Comes Nico. Overall, uh, it was a good game, I would say. I, I'm not going to say it was like excellent. <laughs> the, well, okay that sounds like patronizing i mean it's not one which makes it into like my top 20 games of all time it's it's nice but it has flaws um but it was still enjoyable nonetheless and i'm glad i played it is basically what i mean to say now uh i suppose we'll start with like the good parts is i love love the art style and here comes nico it perfectly encapsulates its comfy cozy cutesy aesthetic all in one um the character designs are absolutely charming i will say i i there's so many characters where I'm like you have a such a cool design and it felt very cohesive i suppose all the designs all work together they all very much felt like we're from the same universe the characters are all very memorable and you know what, what else can i say except for it looked amazingly cute and it, it's meant to because you know the entire premise of a game at least the way i understood it is, is it's meant to be a cozy relaxation sort of exploration game is perhaps how i describe it you know it's a bit of a collective on you know akin to like banjo kazooie or very sort of like um rare <laughs> is, is that the company makes it um those sort of games basically um where you're basically just wandering around aimlessly there's no like pressure to really do anything you don't have like lives you don't have health there's nothing to manage you just explore and when you're done exploring you go on um there are technically i suppose level requirements i suppose before you can progress uh, but the level requirements are so low they're so easy to like attain they're basically non-existent is probably what i'd describe them as so really this game is a hundred percent relaxation is what it's intending for i think and a whole and on, on the whole i think it nails the atmosphere pretty well like the music is all very cozy obviously the art style is very cozy in general the things you have to do um tend to be quite cozy and relaxed as well but um, my only nitpick about the game i would say well i shouldn't say my only nitpick but my biggest nitpick about the game is actually the mechanics in it mechanically it feels incredibly like annoying for the things you have to do in it and what i mean by that is this game is kind of like a 3d like platformer kind of except for the mechanics that you use to navigate the world are extremely floaty and honestly rather difficult to control a lot of the time like when there's times when you're just doing something practically very simple like even the simple like um, volleyball games you do at the beginning or if you just need to go to place a or go to place b or whatever then it's fine you know it's not really much of a deal but then as you start getting on into later and later levels i suppose and here comes nico now we're getting into spoilers so be warned, I suppose. Um, we you start getting much more complicated things, <laughs> but we start becoming it starts becoming a lot harder. Where the, the the I don't know how to describe it except for like you know how like a mechanical platform is. You know you have very crisp mechanics and obviously very smooth and snappy mechanics, responsive. You feel like you're in control the entirety of the time. You kind of need that in those games because you don't want games to those games are completely focused on the mechanics and the execution. You don't want the player any ever at any point to be like this was a game's fault it's a hundred percent basically your fault every single time the game did exactly what you told it to and honestly the game might even give you a little bit of like a leeway so things like celeste and hollow knight or whatever it's very much so it feels like damn i need to get better um with here comes nico because the, the controls are so weirdly floaty and like feel disconnected and feel quite disorientating it might just be because maybe i'm not as experienced in 3d platformers which is fair enough um I've only played a handful like Mario Galaxy is probably the one I've played the most to be fair but um it's not like I played like a, a huge amount of them in the first place 
um, I, I feel like it starts to show its flaws a little bit <laughs> in the later levels. Like, I, I can think of moments where I'm just like, I'm trying to platform, but I can do it. Like, the one that immediately comes to mind was in the hot spring level when I was doing Mumi's um, challenge, where you are basically rolling about in a hamster ball and you had to platform up these like stools to get one of them um, to get a collectible. That's basically what the entire game is, is getting these collectibles. I found it incredibly difficult to actually get the platforming right, <laughs> which has ended up being quite a nuisance, I'd suppose. Um, there's a lot of times also when I was trying to like scale up a wall where I'm just like I'm, I'm not entirely sure if I can scale up this wall or if I can't scale up this wall and it's just sort of just like a little bit of ambiguity there but it's the sort of thing where it's not really that big a deal because as I say um, Here Comes Nico of course has essentially no requirements in the first place um, to do anything so everything I did was basically just for extra fun you know extra 100% completion and I didn't 100% the game actually but extra sort of completionist levels. You know, I didn't have to do every single challenge of a game. Um, that's the, the joy of Here Comes Nico is like if I wanted to complete the game and, you know, I just didn't like, um, oh, have any good meals? Um, once in a while, probably. <laughs> um, yeah, if I didn't like one of the challenges, I could just choose not to do it and then it'd be completely fine. You could still complete the game just, you know, completely normally. Um, but I suppose, you know, me, I wanted to see everything, I wanted to try everything, why not? If a game's got it to offer, why not try it? It, it did end up start being like <laughs> I, I don't think this is it, it wasn't like actively unenjoyable it was just like it felt tedious I suppose is how I describe it but of course your mileage may vary when it comes to that sort of thing um what else can I really talk about here comes Nico. It, the thing is I, I feel like there's not really much to say about here comes Nico it's very much like if you've seen the first episode that is literally the entire game basically it's it it's exactly what it says on the tin you know you what you see is what you get it's a relaxing exploration collector fun sort of simulator i'm not even sure sim simulator is not even right like sort of genre description for it it's just like a really casual collector fun with platforming elements is how i describe it um and there's a lot of times where i think the exploration was quite fun um but uh I, I do think here comes nico if you do play it you might find um you, you might fall into a thing where you're like it gets a little bit stale because it's basically each of the worlds how, how should I describe this? Each of his levels or each of the worlds are pretty different from each other, like visually, aesthetically, and the way the layout is. But you do the same thing in every single world, basically, over and over and over again. Like every single world, you don't, to be fair, you, they do stagger it, so you don't do the same thing all the time. You don't have to do, okay, do every single possible mission in world one, then every possible mission in world two, then possible mission in world three. It's like, if they gave you like 10 different missions, it's like, oh, in the first, in the first world, you can only access one, three, seven, and um, eight or something. And then in the second world, you can do one, two, three, and four or something. Like, they stagger them out, and then once you get more and more things, then you go back to the previous worlds to do the previous missions, which you were missing from beforehand, which I think is a good way to do it. Especially because if you didn't do it that way, then it would feel, I think it would feel incredibly repetitive, this game. Um, but by the fact that they space things out um, quite, a little, quite a lot is pretty helpful, because, like, you start out by doing Blessly and all, like, with the first three levels, and then once you reach a final level, a uh, final three levels, Blessly's not there anymore. But in the final three levels, you meet this, like, couple, like, um, what are their names? Uh, Louis and Sergio and then you go backwards and do their stuff in the, in the earlier things and then you can do blessings again once you reach the end again so it's sort of like yeah uh, they stack it out pretty well but if you really come if you really want to analyze it from a really like I suppose overly critical viewpoint it is a bit boring just doing it over and over and over again sort of like so, sometimes it's fun sometimes like I, I would say um Blippi's levels or the dog levels were all felt quite varied and um different but um and some of them were just sort of like, they were so passive in the first place, it doesn't really matter. Like, Blessies was quite sort of like, fine. But I, I did like, you know, get a bit tired of doing things like Mumi's one over and over again. Because Mumi's one, I, I think it's because Mumi's one took so much time. And it very much felt the same every single time. It's just sort of like, walk around the world looking for the sunflower seeds over and over again <laughs> um but while other ones like Sergio and Louise one felt quite different because I was like oh here's a challenge mode where you had to get from this point to this point which you wouldn't normally like try and make a path between but you had to do it with this um different challenge like don't jump or don't dash etc etc and the game kid uh, had a similar sort of thing where the the, the levels felt very customised, oh sorry, his challenges felt very customised towards the level. Like the first one is something like dive, no the second one maybe, is dive off the building without ever touching the ground. I'm like that's pretty cool. So I, I feel like some of them never got quite stale but some of them also did 
get stale in the end as well which is you know so it's going to be hit and miss I'm, I'm sure other people might disagree with me some people might be like oh this is my favorite this one's not my favorite but yeah um on the whole it's you know all, all, all the challenges are like not very difficult uh, uh, unless the mechanics get in the way of it sometimes <laughs> but um the, the rest of the challenges like the things that you do over and over again are like they're all quite relaxed like the one i think about is um nina's uh, graffiti mission thing where you basically just sort of do whatever you want you make some art or whatever and she just goes whoa that's awesome at whatever you do that feels relaxed and that feels very sort of i think in keeping with the theme of a game it's very relaxed there's no goal really there's no need for a sense of challenge because that's not really what the game is about it's just having a fun time and meeting the colorful cast of characters um one thing i would like to have seen actually from a game is maybe even more dialogue to be honest it really is a strong point of a game is the characters designs are so interesting and cool and uh, a lot of them are just NPCs. A lot of them are just like, you talk to them once and they just say like some throwaway line or whatever, and that's it. <laughs> um, and I think it works for some of them, you know, like the deers or like the birds or whatever, where they're clearly meant to be the NPC characters or whatever. But then I think about like some of the other characters don't get as much dialogue when you see them like recurring. Like Sasha and Louis actually got quite a lot, but I don't remember Nina saying anything really different um, each time we spoke to her. But honestly, I might just be forgetting. So that's on me, to be honest. Um, plot wise I thought it was okay um, it's, so, it's sort of like it's surprisingly sad I suppose for what this game is going for <laughs> which I suppose is meant to be that sort of juxtaposition is the fact that you know it here comes Nico I don't know exactly what the story is about but it seems to me it's meant to be a story about someone transitioning is my guess um, but maybe that's just my, <laughs> me it's sort of like um, projecting onto it or something but it, basically the, the story about as it's absolutely confirmed is Nico got in a big fight um with their parents and ha like had an argument and basically had to escape from a dangerous situation and the mum the mother is very not approving of whatever choices nico has made and the father is you know quite passive in that regard and didn't really say anything to stand up for nico nico just being like i need to get out of here you know time to start my new life or whatever and you have like a pen pal sarah who you keep writing to and exchange things with and it's all about you know becoming and working really hard at making new friends <laughs> i suppose in your friend friendship company which is a strange thing to say i suppose in the first place but so be it um do we do we have enough things to do with my mission i didn't actually pay attention oh we're just selling fruit okay we're just selling fruit and changing clothes um yeah so it's surprisingly quite a sad story <laughs> um, if you look into it and interspersed between going to each new level you get new voicemails from the characters which I thought they were going to be quite like fun light hearted voicemails but then it, it got like kind of sad I suppose <laughs> which is fair enough you know it, I, I just found it as an interesting sort of juxtapos juxtaposition between um, the very sort of cosy and comfy lifestyle that you see um, in Here Comes Nico in the islands and whatnot and then just like the actual story behind it is quite you know sad <laughs> um now i'm not going to say necessarily it's better one way or another to be perfectly honest that one I'm, I'm very much like that should be up to the creators to decide what what do they want to do I and mean, clearly this is something that we wanted to explore but i do feel like it probably could have, could have been explored a little bit more you know plot wise you know maybe i mean who am i to say you know what what on earth not one at first, it's very dismissive, but what the uh, creators intended and what vision they had of the game. Because I didn't create this game, I don't know necessarily, I can only talk about my own interpretation of it. But I felt like, you know, you can touch upon the story a little bit more, you can expand it out a little bit more. You, it feels like it's sort of give you a little drip feed of a start of a story, but then like um, it, it doesn't really get much further. So then um, it's sort of just like, okay, you know there's a conflict um, and then your mother like strictly does not improve of it and your father was like a bit passive about it and your sister no your friend it's just like hey you know i still got your back but then it like sort of culminates in the ending where your father like finds you and then like apologizes for not sticking up for you and just being like hey you enjoy your new life here basically i think it's you know i'll still love you and support you no matter what and i feel like it just sort of like lacked the emotional impact because the it, like there wasn't much set up to the story in the first place <laughs> it's like i don't know like i didn't really feel like betrayed by my father in the first place nor do i really feel like um i was like oh man now he's really now he's like always loved me or, or whether he said his supportive words and did i get like a sense of like closure or relief from it because I'd, again there wasn't too much i suppose in the way of that dialogue between the family in the first place um which is, yeah, I guess it's just like 
the dis not the disconnect necessarily, but because the game has both a like sort of main serious plot quote quote compared with like everything else being very sort of like incidental, everything else just being sort of like one off. It gave it a, a bit of a weird juxtaposition, I think, <laughs> for me personally. But again, it's not something which really matters to the game because the, the game is just meant to be relaxing in the first place. <laughs> is it meant to have like big emotional punches? No, probably not. That's probably not what they're going for. But it's just, again, all I can really say is like that was my experience while playing it. Um, on the whole, though, you know, the collectathons were generally quite fun. I, I would like to see like a, a way in the game to be like, hey, this is, you know, um, there's, a, there's a lot of collectibles in the game and there is this helper character called Pepper who helps you throughout most of it. And um, he helps you like get the coins or whatever, because if you ask him at the beginning, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, uh, if you ask him at the beginning, he'll just be like, hey, you know, check out that area, see what's going on over there. And then you can go over to the area and get the coins. I would like to have seen that for like the rest of the collectibles as well. Like something to just to be like, hey, to help narrow down the search for cassettes, for keys, for whatever the keys are used for, etc, etc. I don't even know why they gave us now I think about it so many keys, but there weren't enough locks to open things with. So I, who knows? Um, but gen yeah, but generally, the, the entire loop, I suppose, is surrounding the, the missions and minigame things that you have. I, I need to like, look at a guide so I can remember what the minigame things you have are. Here comes Nico's Steam Guide. I ended up using the guide because, again, it's an exploration-based game and I didn't really care for um, exploring after I found everything already. So, let's see. Collection Guide. Um, okay, let me think. Gunter. Gunter was a good one because it's one that I think happens quite naturally for other game. As you basically, you see a tall thing, you like, I want to see what's on the top of that. So you go explore it and you find Gunter there. That felt very natural. Wait, is that who Gunter is? Gunter is that wolf, right? Um, here comes Nico Gunter. Oh, no, wait. Gun no, Gun Gunter's not who I was thinking of. But Gunter is at the top of something. It's Dustin who I was thinking of. Okay, then you have Travis and Trixie who have a volleyball game. I think it's just like, um, that won't work quite well because it's generally quite forgiving. Only one of the levels, which is the third level, with like the, the sticks coming out of the ground was like kind of annoying. But generally it was quite fun. But, and it has a very low requirement. And it feels like a bit of like a staple, you know. Um, a short hike has that sort of game. <laughs> it just... It just feels like a very relaxing game, I suppose, to go play with. Fisher, I think Fisher worked quite well, is because the character himself was quite charming. The dialogue was quite charming. The actual game itself was okay. <laughs> um, Dustin, yeah, as I said, Dustin is actually probably one of the better ones because I feel like it happens quite naturally with the game. It's a game very focused on exploration and looking in every nook and cranny, so you sort of just naturally find him anyway. Little Gabby, Little Gabby, I quite liked, but I liked because of the puzzles. I like because I like puzzles generally. I don't. I feel like you had to get less biased. Um, viewpoint if you want something more objective but I liked it. Blessly, Blessly was just my favourite character and I feel like her one is similar to Dustin's, I feel like it just happens quite naturally for most of the time. Uh, the only level where it didn't really happen naturally was with the cicada level because the cicadas were quite annoying to collect um, but the rest of them it's sort of just like oh you're just walking from place to place, you see a butterfly, grab a butterfly it just happens quite naturally Nina, N Nina is also one I think is quite good because as I say it feeds into the idea of like this is just a relaxing game, paint stuff off the ground, don't think about it too hard. Mumi was definitely I think the most annoying because Mumi just takes a long time to do and there's, there's no like, in, if there was just like an indicator you know when you had like three sunflowers left, sunflower seeds left being like look at them, look in this direction or something <laughs> or like a button you can press to be like have an arrow on your screen to be like look in this, go in this direction to find the remaining sunflower seed. Um, I think that'd be good. But otherwise, it was just, it was just like, meh. <laughs> or, or he needs, I think he should be one of the first NPCs you get introduced to as well. Because then you get the idea of like, oh, you're, the first thing you do in a level is you, you jump into Mumi's ball. You like explore around the place. You get sort of like an overview of everything. And then you can dive into it um, in, the, in the specifics, I suppose. <laughs> but, but, would that work? Would that be better? I don't know. That, that's just like, for me personally, it would work better, I think. Uh, Mitch and Mai are fine, I would say. <laughs> they're just, they're, they're, they're not really missions. They're, I mean, their mission is basically collect cassettes. And, I mean, they have, they have a nice dancing theme where it goes. Da, ba, 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 Game Kid. Game Kid was, I think, was actually pretty cool because I think he had quite creative um, challenges to do most of the time. 
Arcade Machine. Arcade Machine was quite fun because, again, it was quite different every single time. I mean, Sasha and Louis. Sasha and Louis, I think, was also quite good. So there's not many which I thought were particularly bad or, like, indifferent. I, I feel like a lot of them are just good. <laughs> not, not None of them were particularly like, wow, this is excellent, new creative or anything like that. I don't think. They were just all, like, generally quite fun. And I think that's kind of what the game's going for. It's not going to... Because I suppose by being this way, it's sort of, like is quite generally appealing so it's generally quite relaxing rather than being you know hyper specifically um, appealing to a specific audience i don't really know um yeah i don't i don't really know what else to say it, it, it's a fun game you know i don't really know what other people thought of it in general it's good yeah it's absolutely adorable i support apparently there's only two reviews of this game that doesn't seem right <laughs> here comes nico I just want to see the store page. I want to see what other people have reviewed about it. Short review. It's a serious gem. Yeah. It's basically, it, it's silly to, I feel like, critique it in the same vein that I'm critiquing other games because it's not going for the same thing as my other, as the other games I'm playing for. Like, it's going for a very, a very specific thing. It's relaxing. It's low stakes. It's just vibes, like, all the way through. <laughs> so to, to hold it up to different standards, being like, oh, the plot wasn't, like, or as fleshed out, or, like, oh, the challenges weren't really there, or it was a little bit repetitive sometimes. It's like, I feel like those are not... Well, okay, maybe they're valid critiques, but they're not relevant critiques, per se, because that's not really what you should be playing. Not, not, maybe not should be, but it's not what it was going for, and probably if you're playing the game, it's not what you want either. But... It, I just want to reiterate, I had a very fun time playing it, so, um, yeah, it, it's very nice, it's very relaxing, and it's chilled out, so, if you like that sort of thing, then play it yourself, it, it's a thing where I think spoilers don't really matter for that sort of game, M maybe, like, exploration-wise, maybe a little bit, but it's really hard to remember where everything is, and a lot of it kind of happens quite naturally in the first place, so, it, it's a game where I feel like if you're spoiled on, it's fine, <laughs> and it's, it's a comfort game, essentially, um, but on that note, I am going to round up this episode of here, so I don't know if you have any other further thoughts, if you played the game, you can share them down below, you can ask me questions about it if you want X, Y, Z, I don't know, but for now, if you have been watching, thank you very much, it's been Animal Crossing New Horizons, I've been dear, dear, dear darling, likes, comments, subscription, shares, greatly appreciated, Twitter, Discord down below, hope to see each other again, but for now, it's our farewell, so until next time, bye bye for now. <laughs>